12 days or 15 days, we had uh, numerous speakers. Uh, we invited from different countries to give a taskira. Alhamdulillah, we have learned a lot. So this is a special series where uh, we specifically invited uh, three speakers from Institute of Objective Studies. Uh, we had for the first time uh, Prof. Mansur, uh, Brother Nizamuddin, and then yesterday, uh, the other day, we had uh, Prof. Um, Z.M. Khan. And today, Alhamdulillah, we have with us uh, Prof. Arshi Khan uh, from Aliga University. He is also associated with um, Institute of Objective Studies, New Delhi, India. So, Prof, we have a uh, general topic, uh, Ramadan, as, uh, the spirit of Ram Ramadan as one ummah, ummatun wahidah. Uh, but we leave it to uh, the invited speaker to narrow down the topic and specifically uh, in this pandemic time, uh, maybe Prof can give us a small um, uh, updating on the current issues we read in the news today. The figure is not good <laughs> and will remain there for the next uh, one or two weeks, that, that's, that's the scientists are saying. But we pray hard that all our friends, our brothers and sisters in India and all part of the world, uh, this is a test from Allah and we will take it positively, inshallah. So Prof. Arshi is Professor of Political Science from Aliga University, as I said. Uh, and Prof, you have one hour, uh, maybe 40 minutes uh, for your uh, wisdom. And if friends want to add or want to ask questions, we'll invite them, inshallah. So without further ado, we invite our respected Professor Arshi Khan to deliver the Tazkirah. Okay, Prof. Thank you, Professor Sharam from uh, the Tribulite South Asia chapter. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. And also thank you, Dr. Manzur Alam, the Chairman of the Institute of Objective Studies India for providing me the platform to share my immature views and or you can say knowledge less views on this uh, you know, on this very important platform from down Saskira where we are uh, going to deal with issues related to Uma and especially at the very turbulent time which is uh, surrounded by COVID pandemic all over the world, particularly India. Uh, as you said, uh, 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 Mr. Sharan, you said uh, one very important point uh, in your uh, introductory remarks, that uh, problems will come and go. And that is a fact, means that, that is the, the truth of life. And I see that how the whole world is very much disturbed because of the loss of life. And of course, loss of life is very important for every human being. But more than this body life, more than the physical body life, more important than this is the life of the soul. More important the soul. But uh, body has become very important in this modern world. And we are very worried about the death. And we should be worried about the death because nobody wants to leave this world, you know, happily because of so many conveniences, so many, you know, attractive things, extraneous factors, which attracts our eyes, our sensory, you know, aspects of body. So naturally going from this world is very painful, but at the same time that the death is not we cannot control death. Death is not in our hand. And uh, there are certain causes, of course, but the doctors, as everybody knows where it is, America or India, that doctors can only give medicine. They cannot give something through which one can become, you know, remain alive. So this is something, a part of Christmas, a part of fortune, Christmas, Tabdeer. So we believe in Tabdeer, but we more believe in Tadbir and we live less in Taqdeer. So Taqdeer is something which is written in our faith. And that is uh, because you see that in India, 
Or in even in US, when you had seen that about three hundred thousand deaths took place in America, despite having the best hospital, and uh, they could not do it, and even the you know the COVID challenge was not so disturbing as it is in India. So anyhow, it is a part of life. It is a part of this world, and uh, everyone has come to this world to go back. And it is mentioned in the Quran that uh, you have to go back to your early home, to your previous home. So previous home is the home from where we came. So we came from Al Marwa, and we came from Al Marwa to the womb of our mother. Then we came to this world, and then we will go to the cover, to the grave. And after that, we will go to Hashim. So I think this is the life chain of a Muslim, of a faithful Muslim who believe in the singularity of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and who also has a faith, who has an iman on Allah, who has an iman on Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, on Islam, on Akhirat, and all prophets and all books. So this is a really very painful time, a very trying time. Now let me mention here that uh, there are two kinds of human beings. One kind of human being, those who accept this world as a final domain, that the world is the final thing, and we are not going to have anything other than this. And this kind of thinking you can find in the ancient Greece in Epicureans. And this kind of thinking you can also find in the realist thinking approach here, or the scientific approach or scientific view adopted by scholars that the world is the final thing, and who believe in the cause, the theory of causality, you know, the cause and effect. So this is one kind of human being. And the number of these kinds of human beings are growing because they are depending too much on experimentation, on observation, on quantification, on all modern approaches through which human conveniences and human comforts can be, you know, can be created and can be invented and can be accumulated. The other kind of human being is that those who believe in this world as a transit point. So this is very important. And you see that uh, uh, I think in the fourth century BC, uh, sorry, in the fourth century AD, AD, uh, there was Saint Augustine who talked about two kinds of world: the city of Satan and the city of God. And he was basically talking in the context of the Christian. And you also find in Quran, you know, that there are people who believe in Akhirat. They have a different approach, they have a different perspective, and those who believe in this world, only in this world, and nominally in the Akhirat, their approach is different. So you can say that the first kind of people, the first kind of people which I said, is the people you know who are more like Epicureans, more like sophists, big sophists, and more like you know, you can say Haman and Tarun and Firon, who believed in their own mastership, who believed in the ownership of their self-proclaimed you know superiority, and <laughs> this factor is also associated with the Promethean cult. In the Prometheus, you know, the character, the Greek character, Prometheus. Also the Homeric. And from this Homeric and Promethean, there's a chain of you know thoughts which have finally come into being in the modern theories or in modernism, or early modernism, or classical modernism, or the present day modernism. And this modernism, you know, you have liberalism and all you have also realism. So you will find that these kinds of people, they are, they are trying to take the ownership of the world without considering anything what will happen to them after 
they depart from this world. And that's why you will find that the contemporary political realities today, in which you find power, hegemony, you know, honor, glory, glamour, ego, and you you know, and anti-environment development and accumulation of wealth. And these people, they think that they can drive the world according to their own ways, they're from their own invention. And that's why you find that today the world, there was a time when the world was having the setting of knowledge. Then there was a phase when the world witnessed the age of information. Now it is age in which the world is witnessing disinformation. So these people, these kinds of people, you can say the planetary people, or those who give the planetary life, worldly life, as a win-win situation for them, they think that their way of life is the most successful and most attractive and most legitimate. But the other people, those who live in the same world, but they do not, they belong to the city of God. They believe they live in the same world, they eat the same food, but when they eat the food, they say, Allah, Bismillah, Rahman. They fulfill their fundamental duties, what Allah has commanded to them, what our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi has said, what to do. So, you know, the worldly affairs to them is divided into two. One is the need and the other is the ultimate purpose. Need and ultimate purpose. The people in the first category, they have forgot the ultimate purpose. And they got very much involved in the need, in the desires, in needs, in comfort, in conveniences, in getting everything what they want. Insatiable desire. They are trying to win, they are trying to, you know, to, to mold the nature, to drive the nature, to take the ownership of the space, outer space of the sea, the land. So, these people, they have forgot their ultimate purpose. But the other kind of people, those who can say the, the faithful, the Muslims, those who believe in one Allah, in one superpower, is only one power who sent a lot of prophets, and the last prophet is our Prophet Muhammad is the last prophet. So people who believe in Allah, Allah as you know, as a Rahman Rahim, as Ghafur uh, Rahim, as Rauf Rahim, as Malik Yomidjin, as Allahu Samad, Ahad. So for these, for this second category of people, this world is a transit point. This world is a transit point. This world is not the place where you have to live forever. This place is just like a market. You have come here to make, you know, to for sale and purchase. And in this market, you have to buy two things. You have to buy vegetables and you have to buy certain important medicines, life-saving medicine. So life-saving medicine is more important than vegetables. 
And if a person is only buying vegetables, and not forgetting to buy life-saving med medicine and come back to home, what will happen? Disaster. So in this world, which is a transit point for a Muslim, for a faithful, that we have to fulfill our needs. And what are the needs? The marriage is a need, for example. The job is a need. Promotion is a need. To participate in governance is a need. To have a social life is a need. To have a good business, a good life is a need. To make a journey and all these things. Okay. But it is a need. But need is not the ultimate purpose. The ultimate purpose is Mahkarat. Is salvation. And salvation is possible when a person, you know, spends his time, spends his life in this world with taqwa. With taqwa. By abstaining from many things which are forbidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But our Prophet Muhammad said, do this and don't do this. So this taqwa, you know, you know, uh, the, you know, uh, what do you say, running our life or, you know, passing our life through the corridor, corridor of taqwa is a way to achieve the ultimate purpose. You can say piety, a pious life. That is most important. If you look into the life of the prophets, even our prophet once lost it. Had he wanted material things, Allah could have given a lot. Had he wanted gold or power or glory. But if you look into his holy life, if you look into the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran, in the holy Quran, in many places Allah is saying, don't do this and do this, don't do this. Time and again, Allah is giving a lot of references and examples of the failure of human being, of the success of human being. Who are failures? Those who did not obey the command of Allah's one, those who did not obey the message of the messenger. Those who refuse to accept the message. And who are the failures? Those who have obeyed the command of Allah Subhanahu so That life. So they are, these are two kinds of people. And the people, the Muslim people, of course, being a Muslim in name is not important. Having a Muslim name, having a Muslim face, a Muslim attire, but amal. Amal is very important for a person. Not only saying, but doing also. Nowadays, you find that there are more than 123 countries which are democracies. You have United Nations Security Council, you have Universal Human Rights Declaration, you have European Union, you have so many developments. In every country, there are human rights. Commissions, minority rights commissions, language commissions. But you can find more and more violations. More and more violations. We have more democracy, more violations. Why? Because talking democracy is not important. Living with democracy is important. Similarly, for a Muslim, Talking of Islam is one aspect, but to live with Islam is more important. And if a person lives with Islam, it is only possible that he can live happily with the power of taqwa, with the highest spirit of taqwa. And the taqwa is very dialectical in nature. It is very forceful. 
it has inner strength why because it has a rahmat of allah but the life the taqwa life which is in ramadan which is possible basically ramadan is a month of one month it is like a workshop workshop of a vehicle it is like a workshop for muslims who can live with taqwa who can increase the level of taqwa and for the next 11 months he or she can live in the same spirit so what is most what is most important for muslim in ramadan is to abide by the command of allah is to obey is to do what our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to do that is more important and uh, just give me one minute because i get to some problem Okay. Sorry for the break. So, was a charam. I'm sorry because I'm using the mobile phone of my son, and it's oh, so okay. No problem. Okay. So, so I was saying, you know, the life with taqwa is is very is is is, is tough, but it's not impossible. It's not impossible. is tough but it becomes very easy when the person is determined to do it. it becomes very easy it will give peace tranquility calm coolness in the mind because this taqwa is basically is also the rahmat of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala A person is doing taqwa for the for example in Ramadan is not because of his or her potentiality but mainly because of the rahmat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the this this holy month of Ramadan is not only for fasting not eating for 12 hours or 18 hours This is a physical aspect, but the spiritual aspect, the moral aspect, or the ethical aspect of Ramadan, is to is to is to repair, is to repair the spirit, is to repair the soul, is to strengthen the soul through building taqwa, through promoting taqwa. alive with taqwa and when a person is guided by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he gets taqwa then it is possible that a person will get the grace of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hidayat grace hidayat of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this hidayat and taqwa can make a human being very rich rich in terms of morality in terms of ethicality in terms of spirituality not in terms of money islam does not reject money but islam accept money not for the purpose of banking for accumulation for self enjoyment but the, for the purpose of serving people for helping others there is a purpose so a life with taqwa means a person who is dedicated to live with the obedience to the command of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all situations and allah says that i will try you 
I'll try you by death, by weakness, by accident, by loss of property. You will be tested. What do you do? So it's a trying time. It's a trying time. The COVID last year and this year, it's a trying time. We are being tested in the laboratory. Therefore, it is very important for human beings who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strongly to remain steadfast, to remain determined to follow the path given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because this COVID is not only a deadly disease, but this COVID is also a kind of intervention, it also, you know, providing a kind of situation in which a lot of interventions are taking place in the life of human beings, in the life of human beings. Interventions in economic life, interventions in, you know, religious life, interventions in the public life and also in the social life. Sorry for that. Uh, I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm very sorry because, you know, I'm not very good in the uh, what you say in this uh, web web talk or this uh, communication generally i'm a classroom teacher i'm a classroom <laughs> teacher uh, you know this soft what you say online online teaching is very difficult for me so i'm very sorry for that again for this purpose because uh, so anyhow because i'm not using my office uh, you know because office is far from here and it's a very 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 sunny time so i cannot go I'm at home. Anyhow, so I was talking about this thing, and then I'll tell you again that, you know, especially in this COVID time, you'll find that the life of Muslim is very hard. Because the uh, life of Muslim, why it is very hard, but it's not only because of death. Death is the one physical loss. It's also because of, because, you know, those Muslims, for example, in India, 80% of Muslims are very poor. And these are the data uh, which was given by Sayyid Shahabuddin who was the member of parliament and who was also Indian foreign, so he was also Indian ambassador, Indian ambassador, he is no more. So he told me personally that Indian Muslims are more than 80% are very poor and very vulnerable. And also, you know, the various commissions set up by the government of India, like, uh, like uh, you know, this Gopal Singh Committee report in 1983 and then you know, what is the justice, your uh, such a committee report in 2005, and uh, also this uh, uh, justice, uh, you know, Misha, uh, 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 you know, report in 2006, and also uh, the uh, Andhra Pradesh Backward Class Commission report in 2004. So, and various other reports, they indicate that uh, Muslims are uh, very poor, economically very weak, and most of the Muslims are employed, are self-employed. Self-employed, for example, in Ramadan, uh, Muslims are, for example, they are selling, they are selling on a on a running vehicle, on a mobile vehicle. They are selling vegetables, fruits, and some clothes, etc. And you know that the fruits and vegetables they cannot survive for more than two days in the very hot summer. And if they buy, for example, apple, or if they buy some, uh, you know, uh, watermelon, for example, for sale, and if there is a lockdown, they cannot sell it, for example. So there's a big loss to them. And so uh, that's why I said that the COVID is, 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 is not only giving a very tough situation uh, to physical loss, but also to economic loss, because those people who are, you know, daily wage earners, casual workers, unskilled laborers, self-employed people, because of the lockdown, because of the lack, loss of opportunities, they are facing hardships. And also at the social level, you find this uh, 
COVID is uh, making a big challenge to a Muslim community because in Muslim community, there, there's a lot of fellowship. The Muslim community is known for fellowship, whether it is a nikah, whether it is a death, whether it is a celebration. You know, people sit together, sit uh, together, eat in the same, you know, in the same plate, all the people, etc., sharing a lot, you know, hugging each other, shaking hands, etc., and going to the place where if there is a matter of pleasure, if there's a matter of grief, you know, but nowadays because of COVID, because of death, one is uh, not even meeting and going to see his or her relatives, even if there's a death. So it's a very big cultural loss. It's a very big, you know, social loss. Yeah, I think a very big social deficit is taking place in our lifetime, in our lifetime. It's also, you will find that the offline classes are off, and you have you know, online classes, highly, a lot of dependency on digital things, a lot of dependency on media, and uh, a lot of bureaucratization. Also, you find that everywhere, you know, bureaucracy is also enveloping all the health system because health system was autonomous. Health system was autonomous. But now, because of the COVID all over the world, the health system is working under the you know, administration, executive, etc. And of course, in the you know, is a big interven intervention to religious, uh, to religious uh, activities because ishtema, for example, people are praying in, in, in gatherings in Jamaat, or if there is a, some sermon or religious talk in Jamaat, all these things are forbidden and because of the infections, etc. So it's a big threat, it's a big challenge to the morality, spirituality of the Muslim also. Uh, but anyhow, it's a very hard time, and I hope that they will be able to cope uh, cope it uh, uh, with the help of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And uh, uh, but uh, and I think that the the biggest uh, the biggest uh, power uh, with Muslim is is not the atom bomb, is not the money, is not the smart weapons, is not the space flight. But the biggest weapon of human being is the iman, is taqwa is the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the fear of Allah. Those who believe, to those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, they will not be afraid of other sins. So I think that uh, we Muslims all over the world, uh, despite having, you know, despite suffering a lot of losses uh, since 1923-24, when we lost our caliphate system in the Ottoman Empire, and loss of territories, etc., and you know so many changes demographic changes in the balkan in the caucasian in central asia in south asia in southeast asia and also in european part so so many you know damages and you know changes took place uh, you know endangering and giving a very painful moment to human beings especially to muslims all over the world but i think that uh, this uh, in this in this Ramadan, our taqwa and Allah will help us with our taqwa with His with Allah's rahmat, and I hope that uh, if we remain steadfast, if we remain determined on following on fearing Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, following the path, you know, given command given by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and the sunnah made by our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I hope. That those who will do this, they will, uh, they will uh, become successful in their uh, uh, private life, in their public life, and in their life in this uh, present situation. And I think uh, that uh, I just wanted to say something in brief. Uh, and if you want something more, I can say something more if you want. Inshallah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. Uh, you have mentioned a lot, actually, uh, two types of human being, those who believe that this world is final thing. And of course, the other one who believe in Akhirah. And you said nicely that uh, some people talk, talking democracy is not important. Living democracy is the most important, as you said, Alhamdulillah. That's very true. They all talk about democracy, but in actuality, they don't. <laughs> So, and then you say that Ramadan is a workshop where we repair our soul to align with Taqwa, Alhamdulillah. 
and you you list down the challenges uh, poverty of course is difficult to to manage a, a huge society where everything is lacking and a fellowship is also interesting we used to live in a commune we shake hand we hug each other now we cannot do that and restri- restricted in religious uh, activity and finally you said uh, iman is the best weapon iman and taqwa alhamdulillah Prof, um, uh, uh, if you can uh, foresee in your future how this COVID will will change the political scenario, not only in India but also in the world, uh, what's what's your your view on that? On that, Prof. If you ask me, it's my very personal view that the COVID uh, is uh, basically COVID is uh, is a very important uh, instrument in the hands of those who want to. Uh, grab the wealth of the world, the power of the world. Because in COVID, what do you find? In COVID, you find that those people who were depending upon the traditional method of treatment, they are withdrawing from traditional methods. All are becoming dependent upon the scientific method. All are looking at what WHO is saying, what the health ministry is saying, what the what the doctor is saying. So people are getting isolated from their own traditional methods. For example, you will find that uh, uh, in Quran also there are many things. When you read every day, morning and evening, you are saved from many bala and baba. Also, the kalimat Allah ta mati min shari maqla. You see, and there are many things. Eh? So, Bismillahi lazi la yuzu ha. Bismillahi lazi la yuzu ma ismi shayn tu kula filars kula yuz kula filars. You know, like this, should that. Many things in our Quran, but people are becoming very much dependent upon these uh, logistic aspects. Logistic aspects, and you also find that uh, people are also getting isolated from because when you are sick, you get a strength from people those who come to meet you for for you know for uh, uh, meeting you to give counseling you to give you some courage, and they say you will be all right. But in COVID, you cannot meet anyone; you are isolated. In one room, in one hospital, you cannot see your friends, your mother, your father, and they cannot see. So this social isolation from self, isolation from society, isolation from culture, isolation from religion. So I think this COVID is 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 is, is somehow is is a very dangerous and very shrewd um, weapon in the hands of I don't know who to. To especially to 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 make human beings dependent upon mechanical things, upon machines. So machine will guide you. For example, nowadays you will find e-commerce. E-commerce means electronic items. Internet is guiding. Internet is guiding. You know, market world market. For example, economy is guiding uh, world politics. Similarly, you will find. That this machine and this uh, what WHO is saying and what rich people, what vaccine makers are saying, you have to depend upon them. You have no choice. So the point is that the 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 the, the COVID is is basically is, is is collapsing, is making the collapse of the alternatives, our alternatives, social, our political, religious, ethical alternatives are collapsing, or going to collapse. Because of the menace of, you know, COVID, but it is here that we people we have to remain steadfast. We have not to, you know, we have not to fear it too much. Of course, it is a very dangerous disease, but we have not to b- get isolated from something which is the part of our heritage. And naturally, you can see that if this is the situation, the politics. The, the political situation will be will be very much Hobbesian. Hobbesian means anarchic. Anarchic means, for example, anarchic means that it will be concentrated in few hands, in few markets, in few computer supercomputers. Sure. So, because uh, uh, this COVID is having a big support, who is supplying the medicine in COVID? The big companies. Who is supporting? Who is getting support from the companies? The big governments. 
who is getting the news about the covid the social media social media belongs to whom the big corporates so what is the situation of the people now situation of the people is like you know like like audience we have become like an audience and we are losing our what you say our alternatives okay yeah, bro bro one thing that uh, i personally observe that um the work in the grassroots level uh that don't catch up in the social media of course maybe the language barriers or because the i mean this algorithm you know you, you cannot find them so if um if of course uh, our brothers uh, I, i read that one mosque in delhi are providing oxygen cylinders <laughs> for free to the community so that's what that i can find but but if we can get together all this network of our um, uh, mosques our uh, muslim ngos can put up all kind of this uh, good deed that they are doing on the social media so that we can see it uh, from outsiders uh, there will be one 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 small way that we can see that ground is moving but now we only see from the big like the india daily all this big news channel who have all their uh, accessible to to the social media i mean that's that's my my personal input so mm-hmm. inshallah so okay prof uh if anyone from the group although we only have uh, 10 people in uh, watching now but we will uh, edit this uh, this uh, recording and put it in our uh, facebook and youtube channel so that more people will will benefit from it So okay prof um any final word prof before we close the session the final word is uh, what to say that uh, i think that uh, we should uh, remain thankful to allah whatever we have today and we should be very much thankful to allah subhanahu wa taala if we are praying if we are fulfilling the command of allah subhanahu wa taala sure. and uh, and i hope that uh, Uh, that uh, if 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 allah helps us if if allah is happy with us then there is no need to fear sure. either from disease or from anyone because sure. you know we have come here to go back sure. we have come here to go back it's like a railway station sure. and what a muslim has to do a muslim has to always remain prepared like a traveler true because i'm you are a traveler tomorrow you have to go to see a site a waterfall site or some mountain site so you get ready for your visit similarly a muslim has to remain ready for departure and what means ready ready means by doing good deeds by fulfilling our fundamental duties duties to allah subhanahu wa taala duties to our people to our neighborhood to society by doing good deeds because if we die with iman then there is no need to fear sure. but people are being you know afraid of people are basically demanding oxygen of course oxygen is important but even those people who are getting oxygen they are dying also i have seen in my university even people are becoming okay recovering from covid but they are getting heart attack true sure. because of the molecules developed in the body because of so many injections and medicines yes. taken by the patient true and brain stroke and heart attack so what to do where is the end there is no end because it's a deadly disease is a epidemic what we have to we can do we can take medicines we can go to doctors and we can weep but more important than this is that we have to be ready for our departure we don't know our departure because in i think in 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 quran in 21st part allah says that allah says that every life does not know what will happen tomorrow yeah yeah sure, sure. every life does not know what what will he or she do tomorrow and where on which territory he or she will die 
true. It is in Quran. So what does it mean? It means that we don't know, and nobody knows about uh, our departure. Even the scientific people also, they don't know about it. True. So the best thing for the Muslim is, if we are with Iman, if we are having pious life, if we are living with Islam, with Iman, with Taqwa, then we should be happy. We should remain satisfied. And we should make prayer for the safety of Muslim and for all people from this deadly disease. And I hope that Allah is Rahman and Rahim. Allah will listen to us, inshallah. Amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. And of course, um, our friend, our brothers, or sisters who passed away due to COVID is a shaheed. The same like the, those previous shaheed, inshallah. So we pray uh, the best for all brothers and sisters in everywhere, all part of the world, uh, to remain uh, patient and to remain steadfast, inshallah. As Prof said, uh, with Iman and Taqwa, we have no worries, <laughs> inshallah. So thank you so much, Prof. Uh, we hope to have you again uh, in other occasions, inshallah. We will keep uh, organizing these uh, online lectures, uh, online discourse. And this is one also a blessing of COVID. We never thought that we would have this kind of opportunity yeah. to, to, to engage with so many scholars, so many Muslim scholars who are passionate, who are knowledgeable, who have all the wisdom then Alhamdulillah, we will continue to provide this uh, platform, inshallah. Thank you so much, Prof. We'll see you, you again. Thank you. Thank yeah. you to you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.